Hello. You um, join me as I'm sat outside in this nice sun with a couple of annoying birds in the sky. And I want to say that the show that was recorded, well, well it was rumoured more than recorded, right? Rumoured to be happening on the local uni radio. It's no longer going ahead. Ah, oh, indeed, indeed, indeed. But I did get a trial shift on a local station instead. Hooray! Let's hope nothing goes wrong. Now, since the last episode, I've been away thinking about what I want out of this career. And having a local radio show not go ahead after the trial shift didn't help. It really didn't help. Then, the other day, I thought, I'll record another episode of my podcast. You know, that podcast created it because I wanted to be the next Alan Partridge. So he has the Oath House on our Audible, and I thought, I'll create my own podcast in that same vein of talk about whatever, um, chat about life and all that, you know what I mean? That type of um, stuff, yeah. And I also want to talk about the different shows I was on like throughout my career, because I know I've not really told many people what my career was. If you don't know, if you're a new fan of the album of Flower Pot Saga, you wouldn't actually know, would you? No, no you wouldn't. This includes the shows I'm going to be talking about, that is, but my children's shows on the BBC, and my adult shows are also on the BBC, but were, uh, after kids were um, supposed to go to bed. But it's hard to get kids to bed for another good show on the teller. Yeah. I don't, know, I don't have any children of my own, but we all know what it's like. Then, they, they say, then they say, but they say it, they don't say it then, but they said it, someone said it to me then. Um, like, just before I broke God, they said this um, exact quote, well, I had to write it down. If you hear ruffling on paper, I'm not a ruffler, I'm just uh, trying to make sure I get the quote as accurate as humanly possible, you know, to make sure that nothing goes horrifically wrong trying to give a quote. Because most things go wrong. That's the joke, if you don't get it. They say that life's full of ups and downs, and this show is all about how I go about getting back on the to the high life and get my own TV show on the telly again. Now, due to the internet, I'm more likely um, at this rate, to get my own BBC3, um, YouTube series, you know, like, uh, 4, 4.0 do, you know, like Channel 4 do, but, yeah, 4.0, well, I've got a feeling that will happen to me, because, I know that TV, anyway, is very expensive these days, and the ideas I've got are, like, 50, 40 million pound ideas, but, you could do them on a cheap if you are, uh, if you like sell the format, because I'm a very good uh, format maker. Uh, that, that's my nickname in the TV industry. Oh look, there comes format maker. He's like, um, it's like Mr. Maker, but for formats, you see. Anyway, so let's get on with the rest of the show. Let's start at the beginning. In 1973, I was on the head of the children's department. I wasn't on the head of the children's department. I wasn't on the like, department team is what I was trying to get at. But I went up to the head of the children's department at the BBC. Oh, what a nice chap he was. Yeah, yeah, very nice chap. Um, I don't think I can remember his name, but I do know he was a cracking fella in the... He was hilarious. He could have been 
a comedian, but he chose to do a job that right like suited him. He um he, he's the one that later on helped commission Grange Hill. Like he he, he was the one that made sure it stayed commissioned. He didn't commission it right at the beginning, he was later on in that uh, thought process because it was minding his own business doing other programmes at that time. Um and what he asked is he asked me to be in a children's drama because I'm an actor, presenter, and I'm around happy chappy. <laughs> um, all about a family who lost their favourite candle. It was called Candle in the Wind because the candle had been blown out by big gusts of wind. Now, I know what you're saying. Albert, Albert, I don't remember that. I was a child in, in the 70s. How do I never remember that? Well, it was one of those that didn't get high rating listing in the Radio Times. The critics weren't very happy with it, so you wouldn't have heard of it because you went, oh, that looks awful. And um, it got cancelled after six episodes. We recorded 12, but uh, as you do, they cancelled it and rightly so because it's like we'll pull it to drinks. Literally, I had to yank a candle from one end of the room to the other. That was been blown by a wind. And obviously, we were in a lighthouse, so there was no wind that day. Really, there was no wind that day. Or any of the days we filmed, actually. So, um, it was very weird. Now, I want to make it clear, and I'm going to say this several times, I want to make it absolutely clear, I am not, I repeat, I have not had any surgery at all to make me look young. It's just, I've got a very young face. So, don't at me, or whatever the modern kids are saying these days. Because I don't know. Um, now, one of my favourite things about this podcast is I can talk about absolutely anything. And one of the things I want to talk about briefly is that my favourite TV programme in the whole entire world is Doctor Who. Yeah, Doctor Who. Now, Doctor Who is amazing. And my, um, my doctor, like, the doctor that was uh, on when I was actually watching the show was John Pertwee because in the early days I was like too busy with my career so I didn't have enough time to watch Doctor Who so I didn't, I didn't watch William Hartnell or uh, Patrick Chatton then, I have now and uh, John Pertwee was incredible Absolutely incredible, you see. Now, moving back on to track, we're um, going to just talk about one thing, and one thing only, right? It's that um, my, my favourite thing I've done is a one-act play where I played a snowman and stood still as a snowman for 20 minutes and no one batted an eyelid. It's weird, right? Yeah. Oh, someone's on the phone. Hello? <coughs> Who may I ask is, um, calling? <coughs> Sorry, didn't get that. Say it again. <coughs> Sorry, didn't get that. Say it again. <coughs> Sorry, didn't get that. Say it again. <coughs> right, I'll turn this one last time. Who may I ask is calling? <coughs> Right, that's it. I give up. That is the weirdest conversation I've ever had. Anyway, back to what I was saying. That's right, in the early days of uh, my career at the BBC, it was so fun just walking around the BBC with so many popular programmes being recorded. For example, uh, Monty Python were always rehearsing when I was in the building. And it was so fun to watch them through the window. You didn't know I was there. Yeah. Oh, shut up, birds. Why are you so loud? Hang on a second. 
I think it could be because the window was left open. All the birds are flowing inside. Shoo! Shoo! Oh, they're not going to leave, are they? Right. How has that happened? I remember bolting that window shot last night. Right. What we should do, I attach a old-fashioned cassette recorder to me on my neck so I, I can record if I sleepwalk. So, um, let's try that. That's so warm. Yes, that's so warm. Yeah, yeah, that, that's so warm. I mean, oh, oh, it's so warm. I think I might need to go in there, open the window, and get a pint of milk from the kitchen. Oh, world, three, rainbow two. Oh, what a wonderful world. <laughs> Let's stop the recording. <coughs> what a beautiful nice sleep that was. Right. Let's press play. Beep. 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 That's so warm. Yes, that's so warm. Yeah, yeah, that, that's so warm. I mean, oh, oh, it's so warm. I think I might need to go in there, open the window, and get a pint of milk from the kitchen. Oh, oh, three, rainbow two. Oh, what a wonderful world. <laughs> Oh no, that means that I open the window in my own sleep. Well, hopefully next time in the next edition of this podcast that it won't be as eventful as this one. So I can um, really open up about my past and my career. So, thanks for listening. Bye! What Happened to Albert Falpock was written... And performed by Tom Mason. What happened to Fa- What happened to Albert Falfort is a TGM production. The theme tune was created by Hudson Media.